Hi, right, it's time for green shorts. And if you watch the DIY videos on making either of these two worm composters, you may have thought, well, that's just too much work for me. Well, I get it. Worm composting isn't for everyone, and these guys produce great results, but they do require some labor and maintenance. But what if I told you there was a virtually no maintenance way to do worm composting, and it put the nutrients you get from these systems directly in your garden? Well, it's called a worm tower, and I'm going to show you how to make one. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. I think this is probably going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes to make, and then you can get it installed in your garden in another 10 minutes, add some worms and compostables, and you'll be good to go. Tools for the job include a drill, hammer, a half inch or 5 eighths inch drill bit, either a spade bit or forstner bit will work, scissors, a clamp, and a handsaw. To build this job, you'll need a 2 foot length of 4 inch PVC pipe, a 5 by 5 inch piece of screen, and a 4 inch PVC repair coupling. Okay, so there are the parts and tools. Let's get started. Our first step is we're going to take about an inch off the end of our long pipe here to create a ring and we'll use that in making the lid. So I'm gonna clamp this down and cut off one inch. I'm gonna cut halfway through this and then flip it around. Keep in mind that these edges don't have to be perfect. You'll use the finished edge um, to be up on the lid, and then we'll put the rough edge here in the ground, so it doesn't matter if these things are a little choppy. Of course, if you've got a miter saw, you can cut it on that, it'll go a lot faster and be a little more even. Note that PVC is not usually recyclable. Please make sure to clean up your debris and put it in the trash. Next, we'll use our drill to perforate the bottom six inches or so of the pipe. This is what's going to go below the ground um, and allow the worms to move in and out of the tower into the garden soil, but they're going to come back because they do not like earth. They are composting worms, so they're going to want to be in the compost, but they'll move in and out, lay their cocoons, uh, take their castings out with them into the garden, and generally be happy in this environment. So the spade bit works just fine, but I'm going to use this Forstner bit because it actually removes all the material um, and it's going to turn it into a nice ribbon that I can easily pick up and, and toss away. So spade bits are adequate and they're a lot less expensive. I just happen to have some Forstner bits on hand, so I'm going to choose that option. There's a bullfrog down in the creek that thinks that croak is someone talking to him. The nice thing about using the Forstner too is that there really aren't any burrs on the inside. The spade bit was probably going to leave some burrs that you may want to sand off, but uh, this bit does it nice and clean. I've seen some designs on YouTube that just put a few holes in these things. I like having more contact with the soil for the worms to move in and out. I just think you're going to get better breakdown of the compost, better transfer of the compost out into your garden, and a better flow of the water that you're going to pour through your system as well. So I like lots of perforation. In a natural habitat, the composting worms are basically going to live in the top layer of the soil where the composting happens before it breaks down and tightens up into earthworm territory. And so what we're doing here is we're just creating a mechanical separation between those two zones. And of course we're going to feed that compost layer with kitchen scraps. With an enclosed worm bin system, of course you're keeping all of your worms in the bin. This type of system, your worms are probably going to move into the garden a little bit. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
the colony inside the, the tower is going to regenerate even as some worms move out and form their own groups in the garden. And again, they're going to stay in that top layer of soil where they're going to uh, be putting castings right, right at your plants, which that's also a good thing. This is the lion's share of the work on this project, just drilling these holes. Creating the lid isn't going to take nearly as long, nor the insulation. Just put some rocking tunes on your iPod, you'll be done in no time. Now, of course, I used some 4-inch PVC I already had on hand from a longer piece. It's cheaper if you buy it at length. However, you can generally find a 2-foot cut section for purchase at the local home improvement store. So that's always an option as well. And then you don't have any excess if you don't think you'll be needing PVC for another project. But if you have a sizable garden, you probably need you know, four or five of these. So you might as well buy the 10 footer and, and make multiples. And the last row. All right, you'll notice that this isn't perfectly even, but worms don't have rulers. So I think we'll be okay. They'll just be happy they can get in and out of this tower and make their homes. All right, so I'm just knocking out any of the pieces that stayed inside. And you can see here we get a nice perforation. Now again, at, at this stage with the spade bit, you'll want to knock down any burrs that are inside here. Honestly, I don't know that they would hurt anything. They won't hurt the worms. Certainly the worms will just work around it. However, what they might do is scrape your hand as you're cleaning this thing out someday. So you might want to go ahead and take care of that now to avoid that problem in the, in the future. All right, let's set this aside and work on the lid. The reason we're going to do a lid for this is because all of my worm composting bins have attracted soldier flies. And so to limit their population, we want to put a, a lid on the top. And to make that, we're going to use a screen and a coupling. We'll basically set the screen on the coupling and then use this ring that we cut to push down inside to lock it in place. Now this is going to give us a little recessed area in the top of this lid and that's where we're going to be able to pour water down into this to flush out all those nutrients into the garden and provide the moisture that the worms need to do their work. First I'm going to set the screen on the top and just place this ring over it and then get a, a quick cut around the ring, leaving a little bit of excess here to get captured between the ring and the pipe. But I also want to just leave enough for holding it in place and not so much that any sticks out above the top of the ring. Now you'll be, make sure to put your finished edge from your pipe up. I mean it really doesn't matter but it would be a little neater to do it that way. So my cut edge is actually going down. So then with, with the hammer, you can probably just push it in but you may find you need to tap it in. So now we have a recessed screen in our lid here and we'll be able to use this side to put on the top of our worm tower and then pour water down through this. So it goes together just like this. And you want to make sure you don't jam this thing on there because it can get stuck. This actually is a repair coupling which doesn't have the little flange in the middle. A lot of times these units have a, a flange, a bump in the middle that stops the pipe from going too far through it. This is used as a repair coupling so it doesn't have that flange because you got to slide it on the pipe to get it on and then back it up to cover the joint. So this actually works great for for this purpose because it's designed to have a little more movability than a normal uh, coupling. So, 
If you can find one of these repair couplings, that's the best thing for this job. If you can only find one that has that flange in the middle, don't worry about it. But you want to be careful not to put it on there too tight because it'll be snug and it might be difficult to get off. So you could help that potentially by sanding down um, the area where you're going to have it sitting on there to reduce the, the diameter of this a little bit to help the lid move on and off more easily. All right, so our worm tower is completed. Now let's go put it in the garden and install some worms. All right, so I'm here at my garden bed and let's get this worm tower installed. I'm installing this particular tower in one of my three by eight foot raised beds, which eventually will have two towers. So I'm gonna place it toward one end of the bed. I'll pull back the mulch by hand and then finish digging the hole with a garden trowel. Once the hole's dug, let me just check for depth here. It's going to have my top holes a little higher than I want. This is about two inches of uh, hay and compost on the top of this, so I want to go a little bit deeper. Maybe a little more. Alright, that'll do it. I'm gonna use the soil that I dug out to backfill. I wanna pack it a little tight to start because I want the worms to establish their home inside the worm tower before they start to move out. I want them to come back. All right, now that we got this installed and add our compostables and our worms. Alright, so here's what I have to put in the worm composter. I'm going to start with some shredded paper. For bedding. And I've got some kitchen scraps here. Some banana peel. Some coffee grounds. I'm going to drop that filter in there as well. And I've actually got about 576, actually no, it's more like 327 worms. They've been in a pre-bin waiting to be put in to the actual home. I'm, I'm just transferring them with some of the bedding that they had there. This is probably about 250, maybe less. You would be fine with 100 to 150 to start. So I'm just gonna drop that in. And I'm also gonna add a little grit. We've got some sand. Uh, grit helps the worms process, so it's kind of like our dietary fiber, if you will. And sprinkle a little grit in there. The last component I've got is I brought some rainwater from my rain barrel, and I'm going to give this a good soaking. And I'm going to add a top layer of bedding, so another layer of paper. You can use newspaper, paper towels, cardboard. Wash the grit off my hands. Put the lid on, and we're done. Well, there you have it. Worm composting, low maintenance, right in the garden. Put your food scraps in, water through this tube, and you are filtering all those wonderful nutrients out into the garden soil. Let me know in the comments below if you've had success using this design in your garden. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. In this case, you're transforming kitchen scraps into valuable organic fertilizer for your garden. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.